It's my nerd world and Depeche Mode, the podcast. On this week's episode, a little bit of news that I just came across from a brand new article about the band's upcoming album, plus a lot of listener feedback that I'm really excited to be sharing with you this week on Depeche Mode, the podcast. It is my nerd world, and welcome to it, Depeche Mode, the podcast, and I am your host, John Justice. Glad that you were checking out another episode. I really do appreciate you taking time, uh, your valuable time out, uh, to hear me talk for (laughs) 20 to 40 minutes about uh, the band that uh, we all know and uh, know and love. To be honest with you, I wasn't sure what I was going to do for this week's episode. If you are, you may or not, may, uh, you may or may not be like me in, with, with regard to this, and so I'm I'm making some bold assumptions here. There were a lot of fantastic interviews that came in the wake of the press conference that uh, took place, and I covered uh, last week. And uh, thankfully, uh, a lot of individuals asked some really, really relevant questions to the band, and we got a little bit more um, insight. Uh, into the uh, producers uh, of the album, uh, Marta Salongini. If I'm saying that right, I know Dave Gone was struggling with that. Is the first woman uh, ever in Depeche Mode's team to produce their next album. I had asked this on last week's episode, I believe. Uh, the, one of the photographs had shown Marta uh, in the studio with Martin. Uh, and uh, it turns out that is Salongini. Uh, in an in in Italian producer who works with uh, with James Ford. So I had pondered going and grabbing uh, a bunch of pieces of the of the other interviews that were done uh, uh, to share them on this week's episode. At the same time, I haven't had a ton of time on my hands, uh, and I also thought, well, I wonder how many uh, individuals have actually gone and listened to those interviews and watch those interviews already so it's something i may still go and and do i just haven't decided yet but if you haven't i guess all this is to say is if you haven't gone uh, on youtube and watched a bunch of those uh interviews i would really encourage you uh to do so there was one in particular with martin where he got uh, into a little bit more detail about the passing of uh of andrew fletcher and it dovetailed nicely into some of the commentary that I had given last week, just talking about the creative process and the difference between fan expectations and what um, Dave and Martin have been have been going through. So uh, perhaps I'll, if I have some time on my hands for next week's episode, I'll go ahead and compile um, those interviews to uh, to share with you. However, in the meantime, what I do have this week is one really interesting quote from this. Uh, from this article that I had the the chance to read in its entirety. It's in another language, and I actually am pulling this from a tweet from Depeche Mode SK, Depeche Mode underscore SK on Twitter. Fantastic uh, Twitter um, account to follow. They do a lot of great, um, uh, they put out a lot of great Depeche Mode content. So if you want to stay up to speed beyond this show, I would definitely encourage you to go and check out at Depeche Mode underscore SK. Uh, but they just tweeted this 38 minutes ago. Uh, in this interview, and the article's written in, written in, another, in a, uh, another language, so I haven't had a chance to, uh, to go and find it and get it translated. But this quote I found really fascinating. Dave Gahn says, With each new tour, I dive into our disog- uh, discography uh, to see what could be unearthed. The new songs uh, have to blend well with the old ones. There are songs like The Sun and the Rainfall, which we haven't played since the 80s, and to which we could give a chance this time. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I've done a lot of fantasy playlists in my mind. Uh, I do it a lot when I'm listening to Depeche Mode. Just what if they open with this track or what if they open with this track? And the idea of on the Memento Mori tour <laughs> of the band doing a fully produced new newer version of The Sun and the Rainfall just thrills me to no end. It also got me thinking that I wonder if we will get some changes with the playlist uh, considering the fact that we don't have um, Andrew Fletcher with us anymore. And if you've seen in previous interviews, they've mentioned quite a bit that it's really difficult to come up with a playlist when they go on tour because there's so many, there's a certain set of particular songs they know they need to play. But at the same time, they want to make sure they kind of keep it fresh and new. So they're limited in their options. So you have the classics they need to play along with the new truck, the new tracks they need to play. And it doesn't give them a lot of wiggle room and all of the bands sort of gives their own share of input of what other songs are going to play. And without a third voice, because this is the hand that they've been dealt. Uh, this could pro- really provide an opportunity for the band to put together a, a, a unique playlist. Uh, and I, I, I really do wish that they would go back into their, into their catalog, go deep into their catalog and grab tracks like the sun and the rainfall. Um, oh man, to have them do. And then, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, I could just go on and on about the number of songs that I would love to see them play live. And I'm excited over the fact that, and they do this every tour, but to hear Dave talk about how the old songs need to blend with the new songs. You know, they're so focused on every tour to make sure that it has this cohesive feel. And it's one of the things that I've always loved about the band is that every album is unique. And from the artwork right down to the song choices to the sound of the songs, Each album is its own unique thing. And you hear a track and you go, yeah, that's from that album. And that's from that album. And it's just one of those, one of those pieces of consistency from Depeche Mode uh, that adds to just the, the overall greatness of this, uh, of this band. So in terms of uh, content, that's pretty much it, but I have a lot of listener feedback. So that's going to be the focus of the show this week. I want to read uh, your comments and I want to respond to those. And so, uh, you know what? I don't want to waste uh, any more time. Let's get to listener feedback this week. Javier writes in, hi, John, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Uh, I got sick again. <laughs> it's been really ridiculous. Uh, all I can do is laugh. Uh, ended up catching a cold uh, that uh, put me, t- took, me, took me down for the count for a while. So, and actually, I don't think I've done an episode for two weeks, have I? Now that I think about it, because I was sick last week, so I missed a week. So my apologies for that. That's why I wasn't here. Um, yeah, so, but I'm doing much better, as you can tell by uh, the sound of my voice and my constant stuttering. Um, Javier goes on to say, I'm glad this podcast is returning. I really miss it. I have to say I'm very excited um, about this upcoming album, even more uh, so with the intro and of the new song they shared. Um, I hope the tour includes Latin America. So far, not but they'll always announce it later. Um, I have not gotten my tickets yet either, uh, just because, as I mentioned in the last episode, it's uh, been difficult trying to (laughs) figure out how I'm going to make the select number of North American dates, and so I'm just trusting that the band comes around after the European tour like they did the last tour. Uh, I watched the interview in Berlin, and the host was not up to the interview. Reading what to say seemed to be all improvised. What a pity. Anyway, to end this email... I have to say, uh, my wishes to see Alan and the band vanished once again. I know this is unlikely to happen, but the hope is still present. Uh, See you. May the force. Sorry, wrong podcast. (laughs) Uh, P.S. Great name of the album, Javier. Uh, Thanks, uh, Javier. I really do appreciate it. And um, Martin was asked specifically, and it might even have been Depeche Mode SK uh, that interviewed him, because I know they had that that, uh, Twitter channel had a chance to, uh, to interview Martin. But they asked him about Alan's return, and Martin was like, listen, you know, it's been decades since Alan's been in the band, and he's got his own thing going on. It's like it's not even a consideration, you know, for the for the band, and, and, and that makes sense. Uh, Anthony Medina writes in, 
I had the same thoughts about the press conference. I think the people who organized it weren't at their best. I'm sure DM will do well as far as the album and tour. And as I stated at the start of the episode this week, the other uh, interviews that took place really did make up for the press conference. Um, Dean writes in, and I'm just excited for Dean. Uh, thank you for our for your podcast. Uh, it's looking strongly like I'll be able to tick off an item on my bucket list now. My wife has approved us to fly from New Zealand to San Francisco to attend either the Sacramento or San Jose concerts or both. Now I have to wait a day and a half to secure our tickets and book the flights. Very much looking forward to this. Dean. Dean also did write me back to say that he did indeed book his flights. And he was uh, obviously really um, excited about that. So congratulations, Dean. I'm super happy for you. All right. Um, Germaine Deplez writes, um, So about that second sample. Was I the only one singing every time I think I'm falling, I get down on my knees and pray? Kind of sounds like New Order Bizarre Love tri- a Triangle. Very 80s-esque. I love it. I hope all the songs have that retro feel. Uh, yeah, I you know, it wasn't until somebody pointed out pointed that out that I ended up hearing the cadence in there. Um, and while it's not a direct one-to-one comparison, um, I definitely can hear it uh, once again. Somebody had, uh, had made that comment. All right, a uh, friend of the show, uh, Stephanie, writes in. And says, uh, you're asking us uh, to write you. And right now, there's not much more on my mind than Depeche Mode. They are a uh, part of my life. Uh, It's evening, and I have time to think about the press conference and what I heard you say today. I'm in between. Dave and Martin are sitting there, but Fletch is missing. I will always miss him. They're a duo. It feels weird. uh, But they do what I love. They make their music. I like the snippet we heard today. A colleague congratulated me on this extraordinary band, which made me a little proud. I'll see them at the Berlin uh, Berlin Olympic Stadium. And I believe uh, I was uh, tweeting back and forth uh, with her, and she, uh, I believe it's right around my birthday. Um, And I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for sharing all the news with us, and I hope you're doing well. I am. Uh, I will think a little more about Memento Mori, and I... Thank these extraordinary gentlemen for it. Best best wishes from Germany. Looking forward to your next podcast. Uh, B.S. Everything you said about me on Twitter is true. Snow in June. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Stephanie. All right. Uh, Gray Room writes, great show today. A few things. The first two minutes of music was actually good. I agree with you that it sounds very Depeche Mode-esque. I guess I'm like you in that I analyze every beat, every measure, and every sound. The atmospheric qualities of the first part, which may be a couple of different loops from the same song, sounded great. The second section, which is clearly a different song and may, in fact, be a single, sounded quite promising. And to me, the tone of the guitar hook and the pattern was very akin to In Sympathy. I love that song, by the way. Martin mentioned that it was two different songs. So that was two different songs we were hearing. He said one was a little bit more avant-garde. And then the second song that we heard, and the one that I played at the intro... Uh, has a working title of Ghosts Again. Uh, Martin had mentioned that in a uh, in another interview. Super excited and thankful we have this to process. The only downside from the event was the host. Not sure I would have picked her to host this. Uh, I tend to agree. And thank you for the uh, for the email. All right, Kevin uh, writes in. And says, I'm a fellow uh, band podcaster. YesMusicPodcast.com. I've been doing mine since 2011, and it's great to see you are keeping the flame burning for Depeche Mode. I saw them in 86. Nice. In Birmingham, in Birmingham UK on the Black Celebration Tour. Um, I'm writing a book about Yes called uh, Tor- uh, Tormado. And I came across a potential link between Yes and Depeche Mode, surprisingly. Colin Richardson worked on the stage sets for Yes in the 70s, and I'm sure you know that someone called Colin Richardson directed music videos for Depeche Mode in the 80s. Yes, I do believe it's the same person. I'm trying to find out if it's the same guy. Any help you could give me with this would be fantastic. I've been trying to find out how to contact Colin without any luck so far, even to know if he went into video work after the stage and set design. Um Anyway, congratulations on your show, uh, writes Kevin. It's really good. Many thanks for reading this. Yeah, I do believe that's the same person. I did a quick cursory look on uh, on Twitter, uh, and I couldn't find uh, – I'm sorry, on Google. 
Uh, I couldn't find a ton there, but uh, in terms of the connection and the time frame and based off of the work with the bands in that era, I'm about 99% sure it's the same. It's the same guy. All right. Uh, and one more, and I would have put this with the previous one, but I had them out of order. So Stephanie had wrote, had written me twice. So I want to make sure that I read her other message here as well. Um, today was a really good day. I had success at the office and in my mailbox were concert tickets for the Memento Mori tour. Oh, I would love to have a pair in my hands. I wanted to tell you what I plan to do in the meantime. Since Depeche Mode um, pretty reliably makes an album every four years, which was not so this year with Fletch unfortunately passing away, I cried to my friend. She wanted to do something good for me and was looking for an alternative to share my passion with others without Depeche Mode taking place. I don't know if you know, but Marcus Kavka... He used to be an MTV presenter and is also a big Depeche Mode fan. He's written a little book about the band, namely how they accompanied him through his life. Um, And such, uh, so you have mentioned on your podcast. He is giving a reading about his book, Marcus Kafka, Depeche Mode, on November 11th in Hamburg. And I will go to this little event. Of course, I'm much more looking forward to the summer and the great concert in Berlin's Olympic Stadium. That's really cool. Hope you're doing well. Looking forward to the new uh, to the new podcast. Best regards uh, from Germany, uh, Stephanie. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, and we all do little things, right? I've been on a massive uh, Depeche Mode kick ever since uh, the uh, the press conference and the release of the new music. Uh, all of the uh, remastered edition documentaries. I'm going back through and watching all of those uh, in order. Most of which are all available up on YouTube if you go and and look for them. Those documentaries are just fantastic. Uh, I have the box set for Sounds of the Universe, and there's two great documentaries on it. Well, uh, I did pick up the Blu-ray uh, box set for uh, the 101 release. I talked about that on a previous podcast, and I've been watching um, all of the uh, concert releases that they've had uh, that I've got on either DVD or Blu-ray, depending on what the best quality is uh, is that's available. So, And, of course, listening to a lot of Depeche Mode as well. So that's, a, that's how I've been uh, sort of... Dealing with my fandom as we await uh, to hear this new music uh, next year and more information about the upcoming album. So that wraps up the show for this week. Again, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. I hope you'll subscribe if you listen up on uh, YouTube or uh, whatever podcast platform that you are uh, hearing the show on. I hope you'll subscribe to the show and never miss one. You can always email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And uh, as always, if you want to support the show and you like science fiction, I hope you will go and uh, pick up uh, a copy or copies of my science fiction space opera series, uh, Embark, available in hardcover, paperback, ebook, and audiobook on Amazon.com or uh, MyNerdWorld.net. As, as I've mentioned before, uh, book one and the whole series, but really book one is filled with a lot of direct and indirect uh, Depeche Mode uh, references. You can follow a ragtag squadron of pilots and one reluctant hero on a journey of survival from Earth to the far reaches of space as they fight for humanity's future among the stars. So treat yourself, a friend or a family member, with sci fi. Uh, written for adults, but great for ages 11 plus. Uh, they are available again on Amazon.com or MyNerdWorld.net. If you like your science fiction space opera to be epic, filled with some Depeche Mode references and romance and action, Embark is perfect for you. John, J-O-N Justice on Amazon or MyNerdWorld.net. All right, that wraps up the show uh, for this week. We'll see what transpires over the next week. As always, I hope wherever you are, you are happy, you're healthy, and you're safe. Talk to you again real soon. Bye.